Hello there, this is DJ Gallup of Courageous Consciousness, and uh, I am here to tell you guys a little bit about a really fun experience I got to have last week. Uh, I uh, was able to go to my first ever silent retreat. I went to a five day long silent retreat. Um, and I'm really excited uh, that I got to do this and, and I'm super happy that I got to do this. Uh, I've been wanting to go to, you know, meditation and spiritual retreats for ages. And it's always been one of those things that's kind of been on my bucket list, but I've just never gotten around to because you know how life is. I mean, it, life is work, work, work. You know, you have everything in your day-to-day -day life you have to get through. You only get so much vacation time from your job. And, uh, you know, and retreats cost money. You know, they just cost money. And so sometimes uh, paying for a retreat was not always at the very tippity top of my priority list. But I, uh, I was, a couple of months ago, I was uh, hanging out with my friend Barbara here in Knoxville. And I was just trying to kind of get some uh, ideas from her about uh, retreats that I should do or where I should go and things like that. And so she kind of suggested that uh, there was this retreat at the um, uh, Magnolia Grove Monastery, which is in Batesville, Mississippi. It's a uh, it's a Buddhist monastery and it's in the uh, Thich Nhat Hanh uh, Plum Village tradition there. And she said, yeah, they're going to be doing one at the end of April. It's going to be for a few days. Um, it's actually very, very affordable. And of course, my biggest uh, problem at the time was I said, well, you know, it, it's hard for me to make the time to go because, you know, it's at least five days between travel and the actual uh, retreat. And, you know, I, I'm self-employed. So when I'm uh, not working, I'm not making money. I don't get paid vacation leave or anything like that. And she just looked at me and she said, well, you know, sometimes you just have to make your priorities uh, a little different. You have to change around your priorities. So with that in mind, you know, she really inspired me and I actually signed up for this retreat. And uh, it was my first time at Magnolia Grove. Uh, I've heard lots of other people, uh, you know, especially in my meditation group, I've heard a lot of people talk about this place before. And it was beautiful. This place, if you ever uh, find yourself in the South, or especially if you ever find yourself in uh, Northern Mississippi, uh, anywhere near Memphis, Tennessee, uh, you should just take a stop down there. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful monastery. Um, it's home to about 25 uh, monastics, nuns, and monks, and it has this most gorgeous meditation hall. And I will add here that, of course, I did take a bunch of pictures, and uh, I'm going to have those up on my Facebook page, which will be down in the uh, comment section here. So if you want to go see what Magnolia Grove looks like, you could just follow that link over to my Facebook page. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about this silent retreat and how fun it was and how cool it was. So, uh, so of course I go and I sign up for the retreat. I drive the, you know, six and a half hours to get down to Batesville and I had opted to camp and I had bought a tent even for the occasion. They, they have dormitories there and they actually have cabins there. Uh, those were a little bit more money, but you know, I, I had gone camping in the past. It's been a few years, but I had gone camping before. Uh, so I was really uh, eager to do the camping, and so I, you know, go and I check in uh, up in the uh, up in the main hall, and they say, okay, you you know, go and set up your tent down here in the woods, and they showed me where to set up, and uh, and then starting at six o'clock that evening, silence. It was going to be no words for the next four and a half days, and you know. I, I think some people uh, might get worried about what happens when you can't talk for several days. Um, I actually went into it from a place of real excitement. I uh, I knew I wasn't going to have any problem not talking for four and a half days, even though I tend to be someone who likes talking a lot, as you can probably tell. Um, 
so anyway yeah so you know starting with dinner the very first night at six o'clock uh there were going to be no word shared between the 80 participants uh there for the next few days and it was such a great way of getting to know people um so first of all the uh the idea behind this retreat beside the silence was that you were supposed to be living as mindfully as possible the entire time you were supposed to be in mindfulness as much as possible and all of the activities that they set up um were really all about um creating more mindfulness in your life so with the meals, of course, the monastics did all the cooking and they provided the most wonderful, wonderful vegan meals for us, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, but the way the meals worked was you would get to the hall and you would find your seat. You could sit anywhere you liked, of course, and we would all sit down together and then um, one of the monastics would ring a bell just outside the hall. And at which point we would silently stand up and we'd go over and there were basically two buffet lines and you would uh you know just serve yourself what you liked and then what you would do is you would bring your plate back to the table sit down and you wouldn't start eating yet you would wait for every last person to go through the entire line and have everybody sit and then they would ring a bell and then you would start eating and of course the idea was to eat mindfully so the idea was that you're going to eat slowly and really enjoy every single bite of food and this is something that is not something i usually do in my own life you know i i think like most people uh, especially like most americans you know when i go to a restaurant and someone puts a plate uh, a food in front of me you know i usually just like dig right in and you know chow it right down but I'll tell you, there was such joy in eating slowly. And the other part of the meal was that you were supposed to stay seated the entire time until about usually maybe 20 or 30 minutes into the meal when one of the monastics would ring a bell again, at which point you could stand up and you could go um, bring your plate over to the washing basins. And so it was just really nice because you had this 20 to 30 minute period where all you could do, you couldn't talk, all you could do was just sit and enjoy your food. And that was so refreshing. And that is definitely one practice that I am trying to integrate more uh, into my daily life. So, of course, there was a lot more to this retreat more than uh, eating. Um, so starting the second day, uh, we had a whole lineup of activities going throughout the day. So uh, starting at 5 a.m., you were supposed to uh, bring an alarm clock and you were supposed to wake yourself up at 5 a.m. I know it's not for everybody. And to be fair, you could skip any part of this you wanted to. If you didn't want to go to the morning meditation, you could skip the morning meditation. But I made sure to get up every morning and I, I was really eager to do that. But you're supposed to get yourself up at 5 a.m. Uh, to get yourself over to the meditation hall at 5.30 and you faced the windows uh, where the sunrise was coming up. And this meditation hall, which you can see in the photos that I'll put up, it's just this most beautiful, huge wooden structure and it has orchids and it smells like frankincense. It, it's really just a beautiful place. So from 5.30 to 6.30, you would do a wonderful meditation. And then right after that, from 6.30 to 7.30, uh, we did this activity called stick exercise. And this is another thing that was completely new to me, but I just fell in love with. So what stick exercise was, uh, basically there's there was a bucket just off to the corner of the meditation hall, and it was filled with these PVC pipes that were about eh, six feet long or so. Um, and you would go and pick one up. And it was basically just an exercise and stretching routine where you would take this pipe and you would do all sorts of really cool stretches. And uh, one of the nuns was uh, doing that uh, event every day. 
And I'll tell you, it was just such a great experience. I, I got such a great stretch in. Um, and this is yet another uh, thing that I kind of want to integrate now into my daily life. Um, then right after that was breakfast, of course, you know, in silence. And then uh, shortly after that, we would have a Dharma talk. Um, and the Dharma talk was very lovely. One of the monastics would come in and um, you know, do a little program and teach us a little uh, something. And then we would go and do a walking meditation for an hour. And of course, Magnolia Grove was so beautiful and everything was in bloom that the walking meditation was just such a great experience. And then after those two, we would have lunch. So you could tell we were being well fed here. And then after lunch, we got to have an hour of what was called deep relaxation, which means we would go to the meditation hall and there were mats set out in the meditation hall. And essentially, you could kind of say this was nap time. So you would lay it down and one of the monastics would um, play a little bit of music and guide you into very, very deep relaxation. Um, and it obviously worked because um, in the meditation hall, the men have to stay to one side and the women have to stay to the other side. And let me tell you, on the men's side, there was a lot of snoring going on. <laughs> the first day, I think uh, some people were kind of getting annoyed with it. But, uh, but yeah, it was really, really relaxing. And then we just had a bunch of other activities throughout the day. We had more meditations and more meals. And then by 9.30 p.m., uh, the lights were supposed to be shut off shut off completely and then you know, you were supposed to go to bed at that point and i loved this program it was nice and i'm not going to say i did every last activity um every day there were two walking meditations every day there were three sitting meditations uh, i think more often than not i skipped one of the walking meditations every day just because i wanted to do something else and you know read a book or something like that um but you know, at the end of the retreat, we were doing a, a Dharma sharing. On the very last day, we had this two-hour window where we sat in a circle with our group. We were kind of split into smaller uh, groups. And uh, and the monastic uh, asked us, um, you know, what was our favorite moment of the retreat? What did we like the best and what did we get from it? And the thing that popped into my mind was on a, on the second night there uh the whole the whole second day of the retreat was pouring pouring rain i mean it was just buckets and buckets and buckets of rain all day long and uh of course you know i was in this brand new tent i was out in the woods um you know so i was a little concerned about uh how my tent was holding up. And so I was so pleased when I got out to my tent at about 9 p.m. to find that actually it was thankfully completely bone dry. And actually it was very nice and comfortable once you zipped it up. So um, so I got into my tent and, you know, of course you could hear the rain just, you know, gently padding on the uh, outside of the tent. And then I remembered that uh, because this was my first time at Magnolia Grove, I didn't really know how the food situation was going to be there. So I brought a bag of snacks. I brought oranges and apples. And, and then I remembered that I brought a beautiful Kit Kat bar. Uh, and Kit Kat is not usually my favorite candy, but I just happened to have one at home. And so right before uh, 9.30, right before lights were supposed to go out, while I'm all alone in my tent, having not talked for two days, uh, I just opened up my uh, Kit Kat bar and I just very mindfully ate it. It took me about 20 minutes to eat my Kit Kat bar. And it was just such a simple, lovely moment. And uh, I only wish I could eat a Kit Kat bar like that every single day. Um, but it was really great. And then uh, for the last few hours of our retreat, which was on Easter Sunday, um, they did allow us to talk so that we could actually get to know each other, uh, you know, a little bit differently and, and and everyone was just so lovely um and so you know i'll tell you if you are ever thinking of doing a retreat if you've never done one before uh especially if you're thinking of doing a silent retreat 
I'll tell you, I cannot recommend it enough. I think that uh, it was just such a great moment to disconnect from the rest of the world, but to connect to the world in quite a different way and to connect with people in quite a different way. Because by the end of the four and a half days I was there, I felt like I really got to know most of the 80 participants I was with uh, in a way where you didn't have to put on uh, airs, where you just got to know each other from people's eyes, from people's smiles, from the way they behave, from the way they would open the door for you and, and little things they would do for you. And it was just such a great experience. So if you're ever thinking of doing a retreat, I highly recommend it. And of course, if you ever have any questions, let me know. Um, and I look forward to going back to my next one as soon as I can get to one. But anyway, that's going to be it for today. I'm going to be coming out with a bunch of videos in the near future. So I hope to see you soon. Have a great day.